<laughs> Another part of this, part of this game. So, we gotta show evidence. And what evidence is it, Fry? message of the deceased. That is the blue badger from before, right? Oh, is he just going to speak the killer's name? If that thing could, I'm sure it would. Looks like everyone's forgotten this is just a jar. The message was left here on the surface of this jar. <coughs> a jar jar. Oh god, that meme. <laughs> what do you mean? If you look closely, you can see a faint trail of blood on this jar. This is gonna be something? Looks like someone looks like someone wiped the blood away. Yes, but notice. For some reason, the blood on some of the fragments was not wiped away. Yes, there's a line here drawn in blood. What you saying is these is these dots were once lines? Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used a few precious moments of it to leave behind a message. One that someone apparently wiped away. That blood must have seeped into the drive where the lines change directions. <coughs> Precisely so, all we need to do is connect these points. And the victim's message will be come apparent. No. Oh no. Mr. Wright, what kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor? How many of these blood stains will reveal to us the answer? Alright. <coughs> so we gotta connect the dots. And just like Patrick, I draw the horsey. Yeah, this one, this one, and this one. Oh god. And this one, and this one. I draw the horsey. Welcome to welcome to how to connect the dots with Asian. <laughs> welcome to how to connect the dots with Asian. Oh. Okay, that's basically an undo feature. Welcome to How to Connect Those Asian. Last time we scribbled all over the jar. <laughs> and it says, and of course the message says Emma, which is really bad considering that it's no more, that it's Marshall's last <coughs> message saying that Emma did it. So I, I've and been, already got that fingerprint, the handprints that's why I've been, belongs to that's Emma why on the I, piece of cloth. That's why I've been, all I've been thinking is about <clears throat> thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. <sighs> so this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. Sky. <coughs> God damn it, Fry! It's all your fault. See, worthy. My fault. Can't say I didn't. Wow. Can't say I didn't warn you. Oh hey, hey, Chief Gantz. Okay. Or should I say? Do you understand the implications of what you've done? No. Dude. Chief Ant. <laughs> what? what are you talking about? Take out the G, you have ants. Chief G Ant. Okay. Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because of his final murder. I believe you were the one prosecutor in that case, were you not? Back. <clears throat> yes, worthy. Because of you, an innocent man was sentenced to death. Not only that, but you used forged evidence to ensure his conviction. <laughs> Cry. Joe Dark really was a serial killer. That's undeniable. I'm afraid that's not important. Didn't you know? We are defenders of justice. But we're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death <coughs> is no light matter. Even if there isn't any cover up or evidence forgery, ultimately the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Despite what anyone may say, this fact cannot be denied. It's 
What's going on in the prosecutor's office? They might have sent an innocent man to his death. How can he just stand there like it wasn't his fault? Order, order, order! Order! It's pretty crap anime, honestly. I mean, oh, never mind. <coughs> Gavel's pounding fell on the deaf ears. But they also settled the crowd. The judge just declared a recess. Where, his, where this trial is headed, no one knows. Great. So basically, uh, the, um, the crowd, the jury, I guess, has gone crazy with this knowledge. Thanks a lot. Sorry, Edgeworth. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. Don't worry about it. This is my problem, not yours. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. <coughs> Great. Oh, yes I am. I'll come back later. Detective Gochu, what is it? You got a lot of nerve, pal. Yeah, the type run around, run all around while I'm doing it. Tom, will you call me here? I've just seen happier people at funerals. I take a lot of having you run errands again. Let me tell you, this is the last time, pal. Here, she asked me to give this to you. There was a break in today's trial. What is that, a law book? Evidence law? Evidence. Why George was just talking about this the other day. I'm sure you know the two rules of evidence law, don't you, right? No, 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 no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. You can at least study some evidence law, really. Chief Prosecutor also wanted me to give you a message. Message. She said, if you're planning to take him on, you're gonna need this book. Him. I guess I'll need to give him this book a thorough read. Doesn't look like that book will do you any good now, though. All that's left now is Chief Prosecutor's sentence. That's why you're wrong, Detective. Huh? <coughs> Haven't you figured it out yet? Why I'm still sitting in that prosecutor seat? So all these allegations being thrown at me? Mr. Edgeworth. The real trial today hasn't begun yet. What what else is there left to do? Your credibility has been all but ruined with the scorch evidence you are unaware of. And this guy found out she unwillingly ca caused a man's death. Now you're telling me what you want to do more? You gotta be kidding me, pal. You're missing the point, Detective. Lana didn't murder Detective Goodman. She merely stuck the knife into his dead body. That means the real killer is still out there. But we're gonna dispose of him, no matter what it takes. This case has hurt too many people. It's time to bring it to an end. Yay. Court. <coughs> it's time. The court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lola Sky. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. The inquiry committee is planning to impose harsh penalties for your actions. Thank you for the good news, Your Honor. Well, yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Remember, this is where the prosecution calls for the witness. But, uh, <clears throat> cough, cough. This isn't easy to say. You see, there is some concern that Mr. Edgeworth may have uh, struck a bargain. I may have manipulated the witnesses. I didn't say that. It's just, you see, everyone has been talking again. Very well, Your Honor. I have a solution. A solution? That being the case, the prosecution will allow the defense to call forth all further witnesses. What? There's never been a case example. But in Ireland, this is an unusual arrangement, but a very effective one. It would prove that I haven't struck any deals with the witnesses. Yeah, I was right. What do you say? Andrew has found a way to continue the trial. Very well. The defense accepts the prosecution's proposal. And it's settled. Uh, defense uh, may now come forth to the next witness. Is that right? You do realize this is your last chance. If you call the wrong witness, this trial is good as over. Defense calls. Defense calls. Damon Gant to the stand. Damon Gant? What does he have to do with anything? <clears throat> As a defendant's partner two years ago, Mr. Gant has first hand knowledge of the crime. I feel we should hear what he has to say about it. Hmm. As luck would have it, he should still be in the courthouse. It would also be the least likely to have been manipulated by me in any way. Wouldn't you agree, Your Honor? True. Alright. Bailiff, please, please escort Mr. Gant to the stand. Is this some kind of practical 
little joke. I was just on my way to lunch. Speaking of lunch, your name and occupation, sir. Worthy. Are you sure you want to do this? Your name and occupation. So you want to play hardball, eh? Please, Mr. Gan. Fine. My name is Damien Gan. I'm the acting chief of police. Now then, Chief Gan. Court requests to hear your testimony. Oh, right over. What's the with the grim face? First, let's clear up this SMI incident. Oh, you mean that time when Lana's sister murdered that prosecutor? Personally, I think it's been made pretty clear already. <coughs> There's still some things I'm accounting for. Like, oh, like what? Like the role you played in all of this. Son? Either you are very brave or very foolish. I'm both. <laughs> You are aware, of course, that the police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. The fact that he says this is already suspicious. Weapons? So I take my testimony, for example. I don't have to give it if I don't want to. What? Is that true? I'm afraid so. Chief of police has the right to refuse to testify. Of course, such an action carries with a certain within certain risks. Don't worry, I'm not here to hinder your trial. Just remember, if this turns out to be a big waste of time, don't say I didn't warn you. Very well. The witness may now begin his testimony. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. To make a long story short, we slipped up. That power outage didn't help either. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Apparently she had already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. Well, um... Well, of course, if, if we're if, of course if we're gonna go up to Gant, then then he's obviously hmm. not talking truthfully. Is that when Dark was arrested? Hmm? Him? He was lying on the floor unconscious. Uh, lying on the floor unconscious? Where's the where's the floor? <laughs> and when Emma sent Neil flying, it seems yeah. Dark bumped his head. <clears throat> I see. Everything seems a pretty clear cut. I guess maybe, maybe got impaled and then fell out of the sword or something like that. Like he was, yeah. like bumped his head, so he bounced back out of the. If the people, if the police chief has the right to refuse to testify, then I'd better hit him hard and fast. <clears throat> well, I don't know if you guys were listening. Well, I think I caught the uh, obvious contradiction. Yeah, of course, like, Gant's clearly ta not talking truthfully. I don't know how to prove it, though. Well, of course, it's pressing. So you two meeting right after him, right? <clears throat> That's right, but Dark made it to the elevator first. So Nina and I split up. <sighs> went upstairs and I went downstairs. I guess you could say you got lucky. What's this about a power outage? Oh, that. I would have stopped all of a sudden, so and I got the shock of my life. But, well, I got a shock when, as Neil was, when that knife went into his heart, though. That's not funny. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll press everything. Did you tell us what you saw? <coughs> it was a stock, shocking sight. Oh, boy. Neil and that serial killer were lying on a heap in the floor, all tangled together. Dark was also lying, collapsed on the floor. Yeah, apparently he hit his head and was knocked out. Next to them were those two poor girls. Lana and Emma. Lana was cradling Emma in her arms, looking back at her now. She must have already known what her sister had done. He arranged the crime scene. How can you know that? This is the victim's body. They had already been moved. <coughs> so that means. I found the body near Lana's desk. That's right. I think you said earlier, it was my suit of armor. That really stopped the prosecutor. Yes. Anyway. Oh. You're saying, the forgery had already taken place by the time you all arrived at your office. That's exactly what I'm saying. I can't understand how the Lana was in the building a body and hiding evidence or any excuse for matter what the circumstances. Stare off the mirror. Better stare off 
staring at the court. Better off. Where they were, they always a smooth talker. But which piece of evidence ties Gant to the forgery? Well, I didn't admit to forging evidence. But that can't be the whole truth. Somehow I've got to link Gant to the answer. Claim you cannot back up. Explain yourself. Several pieces of evidence in front of your office. Take this list for example. That's the list of a scars you wrote a picture on. That was discovered in your desk. Not only that, a piece of this jar was sitting in your office. It was found in your safe. It was found where? You see, Chief Cam. These articles of evidence were covered in your office. They're both concrete proof that you also played a part in this illegal investigation. Yeah, what's the meaning of this? Hope? Oh, he is a defense attorney and would be even rival worthy. So you admit to it then? That you were involved in the forgery? Who, me? What do you mean, you? Huh? Me? Why would I let him do that? Well, you were the one who stuck into my office when you found this evidence. Prosecutors aren't the only ones capable of forging evidence. Defense attorneys can do so too. It's not right right now. <coughs> However, Detective Gumption was present during the investigation. Worthy, my boy. Not even detectives are exempt for the law. Rest assured, Dick will receive his. Oh man, I said it. Where she was due punishment. What? If Detective Gumption's salary drops any further, he'll end up paying to work. <laughs> yes, well, in light of the detective's pres presence, please give us your testimony regarding the pieces of evidence found in your office. Their really relation to the forgery that took place at the crime scene. My, my. Kids these days no longer know how to put, it, put two and two together. Yeah, it goes on. I think. Let's see, what was it now? A jar frame and a list. Now, for all I you could have planted them in my office. Anyway, you can't prove when those when those pieces of evidence were covered and discovered. If they were found after dark was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I participate in it. We were the crime scene, so you wouldn't help me in any way. understand that I am the chief of police, right? There will be consequences. Ooh. Indeed, I believe I will press charges so you won't make the same mistake again. My apologies, chief, but would you mind waiting until for tomorrow for that? Today is, uh, well, you know. Alrighty, Eugene. In return, though. I know, I know. The place, right? What are these guys, uh, telepathic? <laughs> that place. Suppose I did place those items in my safe. Such an act wouldn't necessarily constitute forgery. Okay. Silly evidence found out of crime scene is a forgery. I'm not thorough. You're speaking yes. Right? It all depends on when the evidence was discovered. <coughs> Are you saying this jar fragment wasn't discovered until the, in the initial investigation? It would appear not. After all, it wasn't the same thing. For all you know, he could have suddenly materialized the day after Dark was sentenced. Um, oh, that, and wouldn't that be convenient, right? 
The chief is talking about possibilities so much, you can't rule that out. Your remarks are clever, however, however clever they may be, we'll always succeed in wasting time. It's always something I don't know. It's obvious, right? Think about it. Ah! Maybe you're going to try to see would help me out anyway. <coughs> Real chief camp? Very least, there's one large benefit you've reaped all of this. No, I wasn't aware. What is this benefit? That would, of course, be the position you have. Chief of Police. Oh. The resolution of, your, of the SL9 incident secured your promotion to Chief. That in itself is sufficient. Is a, is, is, is sufficient. Oh. <laughs> Motive. Oh! 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 Santa? Oh, that's a good one. Santa? Is that you? Huh? <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Do you really think I'm that incompetent? What do you mean? Even though it's not the case, I was already in line to become the next chief. The resolution of the SL9 merely sped up that of the inevitable a little. Is that true, Edgeworth? Yes. He was going to be being chief anyway. Gah! Be careful when pointing that finger, or you might wind up being one point today. So that means there's only one possible motivation for you to commit forgery. If you didn't do it for yourself, then you did it for someone else. Don't be silly, Wendy. You know me better than that. There are only three people I look out for. Me, myself, and I. Now, there, it's out in the open now. Yuji, would you mind if I change my testimony a little? By all means, please do. <coughs> I wouldn't be anyone's accomplice if there was nothing in it for me. Nothing in it for you? Sorry, but the only person I care about is yours truly. That girl. That was my sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, Worthy, you'd better watch your tongue. 
I wouldn't want you to get hurt. Just what do you mean? What do you mean, Your Honor? Is that Chief Gannon is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman? Well, not only that, but the Chief is now making Lana take the rap to cover up his involvement. What? 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 <laughs> order! 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 I said order! That's right. You can't be serious. Huh? This... This is an affront to the highest ranking officer of our law enforcement agency to accuse the chief of police of blackmail and murder? That's... That's inconceivable! <laughs> in English. It's too late, Mr. Ray. There's no turning back for us now. It looks like he's the one who decided to go through with this. Did you do this, Mr. Wright? The chief of hiring the officer of the law is involved in this murder? Uh, good question. <coughs> Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gann is just a man. Uh, just a man. Yeah. The question is, is he a criminal? I believe the evidence will tell. I see. Alright then. Show us his evidence that ties you get to the murder of Detective Good. Just remember, it's, it better be good. Well, show that piece of evidence in the next part. See you till then. Yeah.